I'm Tammy Bruce, and for the week, we are taking you inside the left's playbook, exposing not just their rampant corruption, but the method to their madness. We will highlight the heroes in this fight and prove to you how we can and will prevail. Tonight, the extreme left is unleashing what is now the most dangerous, diabolical, and destructive power grab in modern political history, as the Democrats, along with their enablers in the media, have made clear they are ready, willing, and able to do whatever it takes to grab power, never give up, and inflict on everyday Americans what would be an unprecedented amount of control and coercion over our everyday lives. But ask yourself, how did we get to this point? We're packing the Supreme Court, open borders, D.C. statehood, and even hating and abolishing the police became part of the mainstream political dialogue. How is it that the same cabal of entrenched Washington Democratic fixtures, the same ones who lectured us on Trump's supposed threats to institutional integrity, are now the ones looking to upend the separation of powers, overhaul our structure of government, make our cities less safe, all while clinging to the power at all costs? The answer is actually simpler than you think. What the left accuses the rest of us of doing is always exactly what they are doing themselves. No, 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 don't you dare look at them, of course. Look away at their distractions. They don't care about being called hypocrites. They don't care about being accused of double standards because it's all part of their larger playbook. The end game for them is all about money and power. And that means controlling the narrative. Because if you control the narrative, control the language and definitions, and control the framing, you've won. Remember, they accused President Trump of Russia collusion for four long years, when in reality, it was Hillary Clinton and the DNC who paid Christopher Steele, who then used Russian sources to put together the debunked disinformation dossier. And over the last year, Democratic governors accused Republicans of wanting to kill grandma and grandpa for daring to question the ever-evolving proclamations of so-called public health bureaucrats all the while, blue state governors like Andrew Cuomo put sick patients into nursing homes, actually killing thousands of grandparents, and got caught trying to cover it up. Ironically, in the end, it was people like Hillary, Cuomo, Biden, Harris, the Lincoln Project, Swalwell, Pelosi, and Waters, among so many others, who were the miscreants and the scoundrels they accused Trump of being. And it was the Hollywood machine that protected sexual predators like Harvey Weinstein for years while lecturing the rest of us about the sins of sexual harassment and the abuse of women, all while spewing woke virtue signal jargon in our direction seemingly every hour of every day. Did you hear any apologies or admissions of culpability at last, night, last night's Oscars? But, of course, you weren't watching. Neither was I. But uh, they, they didn't. Instead, they delivered the most woke Oscars ever. They couldn't even control themselves for two minutes. And what was the theme for this group of people who were likely relying on police protection to enjoy their night of backslapping and self-reverential congratulations? Hating and bashing police officers. We'll deal with this unacceptable attack on American heroes in detail tonight. But not all liberals, actors and creatives, have surrendered to the woke mob. Some have even taken the lead in confronting it. Rose McGowan is one of those heroes. She joins us later tonight for her first in-depth interview on Fox News. But we are now living in a moment where seemingly every major institutional a power center is taking its marching orders from the left. Big tech, big business, entertainment, education, from grade school to college, along with most of the media, gleefully parrot democratic lies, fuel hyperbole, and spew vicious rhetoric, all to needlessly divide us, the American people. But is there anything Democrats are doing to actually improve the quality of anyone's lives other than their own? The agenda of Black Lives Matter, the Marxist group, certainly isn't making communities safer. As homicides spike across the country, three people were killed and 22 others wounded in shootings across Chicago this weekend. There were nearly two dozen shootings across New York City this weekend. Hate crimes against Asians and the Jewish community continue to plague the progressive Big Apple. Censorship from big tech does nothing to strengthen our democracy. In fact, it does the opposite. And reckless immigration policy harms poor Americans first and erodes trust that our leaders will faithfully execute the laws of the land. 
But don't you worry, while they're releasing COVID-19 infected immigrants into the interior of the country, migrant children get to read Kamala Harris's kids' book. It's included in what can only be called a welcome pack given to unaccompanied minors at the border. Propaganda aimed even at children. So ask yourself, can you name any policy from the left, if implemented, that will enhance the lives of working people when we walk out our doors tomorrow? We know who those toxic ideas will hurt the most, even if our leaders in Washington don't seem to care. It's why the America First populist agenda is more important than ever, and why it's not enough to simply shout hypocrisy or double standards, because what we are up against is beyond bias, it is beyond just a difference of opinion. There is now a full-blown, far-left propaganda machine that has infiltrated the most powerful institutions on the globe.